This week's episode is sponsored by Zently, which is a completely free app made for renters. It's an all-in-one assistant that can handle all of the mundane or messy parts about renting, like splitting bills with roommates, automatically paying your rent each month, or sending fix-it requests to your landlord directly from your phone. You'll never have to sift through credit card statements to split bills ever again. You'll never have to hunt down your landlord again. And you'll just generally have more time to do the things you actually want to do. I certainly wish that I had it back when I lived with a bunch of roommates because it definitely would have made my life so, so much easier. So check it out in the link in the description below. It's a really cool app. Julian and Tom. Tom and Julian. It is the one connection that has kept the Patriots offense running at peak performance for the past four years. Other names have come and gone or bounced on and off injured reserve, but through all the changes, all the schematic and philosophical makeovers from season to season, there was always Julian Edelman and there was always Tom Brady. In many ways, both of them are the embodiment of what it means to be a Patriot. They're disciplined, they're competitive, they're tougher than you can possibly imagine, and when the lights are brightest and the stage biggest, that's always when they play their best. People talk about the Patriot way like it's some kind of abstract concept, but it's not. It's these two. It's this connection right here. All their hard work, their dedication, their pushing each other to be the best possible players that they can be. They are the Patriot way. So when that connection was shattered last weekend by Edelman tearing his ACL against the Lions, fans and media alike were right to be concerned. It wasn't just a loss to the receiving core, it was a loss to the heart and soul of the entire organization. The last time Edelman missed any significant stretch of time was when a foot injury sidelined him for seven straight games to finish the 2015 regular season. The Patriots had started the year hot on a nine-win streak, with Edelman being hurt during the course of that ninth win over the Giants. In the final seven games without Edelman, they went three and four. A losing record in the second half of a season is usually an inconceivable scenario for the Patriots. As the months get colder, they always get stronger. But without Edelman, that nightmare became a reality. In those first nine wins, the Pats led the league both in yards per play and third down conversion percentage. In the last seven games, they were ranked 30th in yards per play and 26th in third down conversions. New England suffered many other losses on offense throughout the course of the season. Obviously, it was a huge storyline at the time. Tackle Nate Solder was lost for the year after only four games. Deion Lewis tore his ACL in week nine. Sebastian Vollmer missed two games. Gronk missed a game and was hobbled for several others. LeGarrette Blunt got hurt in week 14. Their entire interior offensive line was made up of rookies at one point. It was a complete mess. And yet that mess was still just as effective as ever as long as Edelman and Brady were on the field. But when Edelman was no longer there to bail them out, that's what finally broke the Patriots offense. Everything that happened after that, the losses to finish the regular season that led to the Broncos securing the first seed in the AFC, the loss to the Broncos on the road in the playoffs, all of that was because the one connection that held the team together was severed. Now, two years later, it's just been severed again, and Patriots fans are rightfully worried. They lost almost everyone in 2015, but none of it seemed to matter until Edelman went down himself. His absence is a void that might never be filled, but the Patriots have a week to figure out exactly how to do just that. This was also my mission for this episode, which is to figure out who the Pats are going to call on to replace the irreplaceable. To understand how Edelman's role in the Patriots offense works, you have to understand all of the roles in this offense. Their philosophy revolves around matchups. They want to accumulate as many different types of skill sets as they can so that they always have an answer for every style of defense and any strengths or weaknesses that they may have. Number one, they want a true deep threat that can stretch the field and stress out safeties over the top. If the safeties have to worry about cheating towards that deep threat, that opens things up for tight ends and possession receivers in the seams downfield. Brandon Cooks is playing that deep threat role this year. Chris Hogan played it last year and Brandon LaFell the year before that. Cooks is obviously the most talented of that bunch by a wide margin, which is why so many people are excited to see him in this role. It's the first time the Patriots have had this dangerous of a burner since Randy Moss a decade ago. Next, after that speed mismatch, the Patriots want a size mismatch. That's Rob Gronkowski, though technically Gronk is a size and speed mismatch because he's a certified freak of nature, but you get the point. 
Whenever Gronk was injured the last two years, the Pats replaced him with Scott Chandler and Martellus Bennett because both of them had huge frames, just like Gronk, and could box out the smaller safeties that typically covered them. Regardless of whoever is playing the role, this size mismatch is their primary receiving threat in the red zone. After that size mismatch, they want quickness mismatches. That is, Edelman or Danny Amendola or the running backs that can run good routes like Deion Lewis or in the past, Danny Woodhead. If you leave your linebackers in zone coverage over the middle, those slot receivers are going to eat them alive because the linebackers can't keep up with them. If you put the backers in man coverage on the running backs, again, they're going to get eaten alive because physically they're not built to keep up in space. These quicker players underneath are the primary chain movers and arguably the lifeblood of the whole operation. But if the defense does use smaller, quicker linebackers that specialize in keeping up with those slot receivers and scat backs, that's where the last mismatch role comes into play. The power back. That's Mike Gillisley this year, or LeGarrette Blunt last year, or Steven Ridley before him, or Ben Jarvis Greenellis before him. There is a long, long line of people that have played this role in this offense, and pretty much all of them have been successful. If you get small in your defensive personnel to counteract all of those quickness mismatches, guys like Gillisley will just run right through you. You need beef on the second level to stop this, but the beefier you are, the more you struggle to cover guys like Edelman in space. It is an impossible scenario to deal with. As long as those four roles are filled, speed, size, quickness, and power, the Patriots will always have an answer to whatever defense you put on the field. Every single player is a different cog that can fit into an entirely different machine on a week-to-week -week basis depending on whatever the needs of that machine are. But the most important, most reliable, and most versatile cog in that machine was Julian Edelman. He caught the ball, he ran the ball, he returned the ball, and on occasion he even threw the ball too. He can do anything, so he did everything. And like I said earlier, when the chips were down or the lights got brighter, Edelman got better. He was their go-to weapon in the clutch. Beyond just being quick and versatile, being clutch was his true role. How do you possibly replace someone like that? Sure, on the surface, Amendola fills that quickness role in the slot, and he does have good hands, but is he as quick as Edelman? No. Are his hands as amazing as Edelman's? No. Does he have that same trademark, borderline, insane fearlessness over the middle like Edelman? Hell no. Nobody does. It's what makes him unique. Edelman was who Tom Brady turned to for the game-winning touchdown in Super Bowl 49. It's who Brady turned to over the middle with the clock winding down in Super Bowl 51. I'm sure all of you remember one of the most miraculous and clutch catches in Super Bowl history. Whenever a play really needed to be made, Edelman was the guy who made it. That's why, no matter who else is catching passes in the Patriots offense this year, this loss is going to hurt and hurt bad. Edelman held the unit together when nothing went right in 2015, and he put them over the top when everything went right in 2016. His value cannot possibly be overstated. However, there is one man on that New England roster that I think has a chance to fill those shoes. It's not Amendola or Chris Hogan or Brandon Cooks or even Gronk. It's James White. When Edelman went down in Week 10 a couple of seasons ago, White, who was then in his second year, had only 8 catches. By the end of the season, he had 47. The coaches leaned on him to pick up some slack in that quickness mismatch role, but they found out very fast that he was capable of much, much more than that. The following year, White had 60 catches in the regular season. He turned out first down after first down and was an absolute nightmare to cover out of the backfield and when split wide as a receiver. He didn't just complement that quickness role, he brought it to brand new heights. And then in the Super Bowl, he proved that he could be just like Julian Edelman and put the team on his back when they needed it the most. Remember that insane catch that Edelman made late in the fourth quarter? Well, two snaps later, Tom Brady fed the ball to White three straight times to get them down to the one yard line and finally punch it in for the game tying touchdown. That sent it to overtime, where White contributed two more catches and two more carries on one drive, including another touchdown to win the game. And it was not an easy touchdown either. He was met at the line of scrimmage and churned his way straight through three Falcons defenders to force that ball across the plane. The catches and carries are awesome, but that grit is what the Patriots really need from White if they expect to replace Edelman this season. They need that sheer force of will and toughness and the ability to step up on a big stage. White set a Super Bowl record with 14 receptions that night. No receiver, let alone any Patriots receiver in all of their Super Bowl appearances, had ever done that. Not Moss, not Welker, and not even Edelman. There is only one player on this team that has a shot to replace the irreplaceable. New England has their speed, they have their size and their quickness and their power, but last weekend, they lost their heart. Maybe, 
Just maybe, James White will be able to give them a new one. Thank you so much for watching this week's episode. Julian Edelman is one of my favorite players in the entire league, and I was really upset to see him go down and miss the season. I'm a big fan of James White as well, and I truly do think that with Edelman being out, White is the guy that is going to be stepping up in his place. From a schematic and a versatility and a reliability standpoint, that just makes the most sense to me. If you are drafting this week in a PPR league, I highly, highly recommend that you target White in the later rounds because he is going to catch a ton of passes this season. I guarantee it. And speaking of fantasy football, all of these names that you see scrolling on the screen here are the hundreds and hundreds of new Patreon supporters that have signed up in the last week, and most of them did so because my 2017 fantasy football rankings are now available on my Patreon page exclusively for all patrons. It does not matter how much you pledge, it could be a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars, anyone and everyone who becomes a Patreon supporter for this channel will receive the fantasy rankings for free. You can of course find the link to become a patron in the description below. Again, I cannot thank you enough for supporting me and thank you to Zently for sponsoring me. The channel is taking off like I never even imagined possible right now and the season hasn't even started yet. It's an amazing thing to see, I'm incredibly happy and I cannot thank all of you enough. I've got a couple more videos coming out this week. The first is a collaboration with Christopher Harris, who runs the Harris Football Podcast. It is unquestionably the biggest and best fantasy football podcast out there. We're going to be breaking down some tape together on a couple of guys that we both love going into this season. And then as a bonus, later next week, I will have my full season predictions on this channel. Every record for every team, division winners, Super Bowl winners, player of the year winners, all of it. So we've got a busy week ahead of us but I cannot wait to show you guys what I've got coming your way. And one more note here, if you have not seen or heard about the fundraising effort that JJ Watt is spearheading for disaster relief in Houston, I've got a link for that in the description as well so that you can donate and help people get their lives back together all across the Texas Gulf Coast. As of the time of me recording this, Watt has raised $7.3 million that will all be going directly to the people of Houston for food and clothes and generators and anything else that they might need to survive the aftermath of this horrible, horrible disaster. This is going to be a monumental effort to rebuild the Houston area that will cost billions and billions of dollars, but every little bit helps. Thank you all. I'll have more for you soon, and I'll see you later.